Hey everyone, Chloe here and welcome back to the Hypergamous Life and if you are new here, welcome. So I wanted to make this video to open up a very important conversation on the people who will normally be your biggest detractors on the road to a successful hypergamous path. And surprisingly, it isn't men. Your biggest detractors, ladies, will be ding, 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 other women. Can women get along? Absolutely. Can women love and support and encourage one another? Absolutely. But when it comes to being successful with men, relationships with women can turn into the third rail. And yes, that includes our mothers, our grandmothers, feminist Felicia, our mother-in-laws, our sister-in-laws, our cousins, uh, insecure Isabella, social justice warriors, our nosy neighbors, uh, self-reliant Sophia, bookworm Bettys, older women, frenemies, and completely perfect strangers, and women who don't even know us, especially when we look good. Why? Because women are competitive and comparative by nature, and because we are competitive and comparative comparative by nature, women tend to use each other as a measuring stick. Women are inclined to measure themselves against other women and women are more inclined to bash women and to undermine women when women are in relationships with men. Because ding, 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 women, no matter the age or the stage, whether she is 20, 37, 43, or 58, or 65, are competitive for the attention of men. And this is why women uh, love gossip and tea and reality shows and why we want and need to know who's sleeping with who and why the, and this is why a uh, gossip thrives and why we love the latest because women love comparing and contrasting themselves and their lives to other women for sport and unhappy women, which is who this video is about and miserable women will always be motivated by competition and by the hidden uh, and by the hidden and the deceptive mask of jealousy and envy and they will always bring out the claws and the fangs and viciousness and passive aggressive behavior and control tactics and use pettiness and gossip and backbiting and cattiness as a form of psychological violence on women who desire a different path from the status quo and the status quo for black women is to be perpetually manless and masculine and obese and overweight and loud with a nasty attitude and to be the stereotype who's overly uh, Mrs. Independent, she's overly self-reliant and undesirable and a workhorse who is on the bottom of the totem pole. So any black woman who seeks to disrupt the status quo or this pattern or this generational curse will be significantly challenged, not only by the dusty basement trolls on social media who live to attack women, but surprisingly by other women in their daily lives. The truth of the matter is that black women are just like any other women. They desire to be provided for, they want to be stay at home wives and stay at home mothers, and black women want to go to the gym, and they want to go shopping in the middle of the day too. And black women want to be provided for by masculine men and black women want choices and options outside of holding up a picket sign or being a stripper or being Mrs. Independent or having a bunch of college degrees while being manless. Uh, but so many women, so many black women have given up on themselves and so many black women are programmed to resist change that will benefit them and their relationships with men. So much so that they rather invest their time and their energy on being naysayers and hating on the next woman to feed their lonely and insecure egos. And this is where a lot of that negative chatter and hating from the sideline uh, comes into play. It's the whole who do you think you are brigade and the hypergamy is not for black women brigade and the hypergamy is for gold diggers and the where are black women going to find black men who provide brigade as if black women don't have choices outside of black men. So to the skeptics who are lurking and listening, yes, you have every right to be suspicious when it comes to black women having success in hypergamy, but what you don't have is the right to tell someone what will and won't work. And you don't have the right to uh, infect others with your self-righteousness and your defeatist mindset. And you don't have the right to dictate or to control the outcomes of other people's lives. So to that I say, take a chill pill or drink a tall glass of mind your business 
or sit on the sidelines and watch others work. Uh, when first learning about hypergamy, a lot of women get very, uh, they get very excited, particularly black women, particularly young black women who are for the most part uh, engineered to be uh, engineered to be masculine, but many women uh, get the shock of their lives when their excitement about hypergamy and the possibilities that hypergamy bring uh, aren't matched. And many women get dismayed, uh, they get disappointed when they receive more pushback than support from their friends and loved ones on embracing a feminine path. So, because women are competitive and comparative by nature, an unhappy woman would rather dump garbage truck juice, right? Garbage truck juice on your dreams than to see you do better than them. But pushback is to be expected because upsetting the status quo upsets those who have made their beds in the status quo. And this is why I'm always uh, making videos and will continue to make videos about having the right mindset, about having the proper mindset when it comes to hypergamy, because having the right mindset is way more important than anything when it comes to the success of hypergamy. Uh, anyone can slap on some makeup and some lashes and a shake and go, and a shake and go wig and go shopping and learn how to bat their eyelashes for men. But your mindset and who you surround yourself with can literally sabotage your success or make or break your potential in hypergamy. So when a woman decides to uh, shake the table and to put herself on a hypergamous path, uh, which is why you need to subscribe to this channel, and she decides to put herself on a path of femininity and self-improvement, other women who are not feminine and women who habitually put themselves last, you know, dead last, uh, they will feel threatened and your uh, detractors in hypergamy will feel threatened because underneath it all, uh, they are truly fearful of being left behind and they are fearful of seeing others succeed because they are fearful of feeling diminished and defeated. Uh, in life, people will always feel more comfortable uh, with others who don't threaten their existence. And as a rule, people in general will always be more comfortable with seeing others as a as a uh, statistic rather than seeing them as a success. But your goal in life, ladies, is to not uh, make other people feel comfortable. Your goal in life is to not shrink yourself in the presence of bullies. Your goal in life is to make yourself limitless and to take yourself to the top. So that's all I have to say on this for now. Uh, ladies, bullies, and people who try to uh, who try to control others never prosper. Um, always have a plan. Never share your plans. Uh, glow up. Never apologize for it. Never apologize for existing. And always mind the hypergamous business that pays you. And never give the opportunity to catty, uh, petty, and miserable women who have given up on themselves to order your steps or to scratch your eyeballs out or to block your blessings. So stay tuned for more videos to come and I will catch up with you in the next one.